Greetings all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and welcome to the Thursday edition of Brian's Bible Break as we unpack verses from God's Word and reflect on them and uh, we are going to be journeying through these 40 days of Lent uh, looking at various passages and I'm using a resource uh, uh, written by Henry Noun and uh, he there's a number of, of uh, scripture verses that he has laid out over 40 days. So that's the resource I'm using um, for the passages that we'll be looking at. And uh, this morning we are in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 30 and reading verses 19 and 20. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this day. And Lord, as we begin our journey uh, towards the cross of Calvary. We do so acknowledging that we are in need of your favor, your grace, your strength, and your encouragement. And so, Lord, we come this day eager to meet with you, eager to hear from you. And so we pray that you would quiet within us any voice but your own in the name of Jesus Christ. In whose precious name we pray. Amen. So Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 19 and 20. Today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and committing yourself firmly to him. This is the key to your life. And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses is wrapping up his time with the people of Israel that he, in the power of God, led out of slavery in Egypt. And because of their disobedience and their lack of trust in God, has led them wandering the wilderness for 40 years. See a theme here with the number 40. 40 days of Lent. 40, days in the, 40 years in the wilderness. And so Moses is giving the people this farewell discourse as he is about to die, as was promised by God, he would not enter the promised land because of his disobedience to God's will. He allowed his anger towards the people to get the better of him. And he took it out on God. And God punished him by saying, you will see the promised land, but you will not enter it. And so these are Moses' final words to the people. And he says, this day I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. So he's given them the choice. And that choice reflects the choice that we are given by God. Repent and be saved or continue to live in sin. And God has given us free will to choose. We can choose to continue to live in a life of sin, separated from God. Or we can choose salvation through Jesus Christ. To be born again into the new life that he has prepared for us, that indeed he died for us to have. But we have to choose. God will not thrust it upon us. It's a choice. 
And no doubt you know people who, given the choice, will have a difficult time. No doubt you, you know people, maybe you are that person, when you go into a store to buy something and there are too many options, too many choices. And you say to yourself, it would be so much easier if there was just one choice. The reality of life, now and eternal life, is it requires us to choose. We have to make a choice. And the reality is, we live with the consequences of those choices. If we choose God, if we choose life in Christ, we have the hope of glory and spending eternity with him in God's glorious kingdom. If we choose sin, we choose eternal separation from God. And life in Christ is far better indeed. And so Moses recognizes this truth, that life, the life that God offers, the, a life lived in accordance to God's will, is far better. It's the difference between a life of blessings and the life of curses. And so Moses is taking this seriously because he then says, Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. In other words, you're not making this choice in secret. You're not making this choice in a closet where nobody else can see and you can, you know, pretend you chose one way but then actually chose a different way. No. He's calling on heaven and earth to witness the choice they make. It's why it's so important for us to bear witness to our our testimony in community to confess in community to be in community so that we have witnesses he says oh that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. Oh, that you would choose life in Christ. So that you might live. You see, a life apart from Christ is just existing. A life absent from God is just going through the motions. But a life lived in Christ, a life lived walking humbly with God, is a life not only worth living, but it's a life filled with joy and peace. Even in the midst of suffering, even in the midst of struggles, You know a joy and a peace in your heart that, that is beyond explanation, beyond expression. That it is the evidence of Christ abiding in you. God's favor upon you. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and committing yourself firmly to him. This is the key to your life. You see, we have to make a commitment. We have to choose. And there's no magic potion, no special saying or words that you have to, to pray or say to accept Christ. 
Yes, there's the sinner's prayer and there's this and that. The reality is, the key is getting on your knees and saying, God, I'm a mess. I have messed up and I have come to the end of myself. I can't do this anymore. And so I ask you to forgive me in the name of Jesus. I accept Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for my sins. And I commit my life to you. I commit to walking humbly with you each and every day. Ask God to forgive you and then commit to walking humbly with you. That's the key. That's the key to life now and for all eternity is making that commitment to him. It's not saying that you're going to be perfect. It's not saying that you're not going to make mistakes or fall or, or fall short of God's glorious standard. You will. We all do. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. But when we commit our lives to Christ, when we commit our lives to walking humbly with God, He forgives us. He picks us up and dusts us off and sets us on our way. God doesn't demand perfection from us. He demands commitment from us. This is the key to your life. Commitment. One of the greatest examples of commitment that I have seen in my day is the example of Canadian Canada geese. Canada geese fly in, in in a flock. They fly in V in a V formation. And the lead goose at the at the point of the V is the one who is is setting the pace and he's the one that is creating a slipstream for all the other geese behind him so that it's easier for all the other geese to fly. They don't have to exert as much effort. And all of the honking is the, the encouragement of the other geese for the one at the front to, to keep on, to press on. You're doing great. Keep going. That's the honk, that's what the honking is for, is to keep encouraging the one at the at the lead who's creating the slipstream for all the other geese behind them. And the, the amazing thing with geese is that obviously that goose at the lead, because he's the one who's who is exerting the most amount of effort, gets tired. And so he'll slip back into the V and the next one in line will move forward into the lead position and take his place. And they continue to honk to encourage him. And he gets tired and he slips out of, out of line and the next one slips into the lead position and process continues and they are committed to one another and to helping the flock get to their destination they can't do it on their own a single goose can't make the trip from from Ontario to South Carolina which is 
one of the places where they often go to the Carolinas for winter. Although looking around here, you might question that. But anyway, they do migrate to the Carolinas for winter. You know, they can't make that trip alone. They need one another and they are committed to one another to help the entire flock get there. And what's really interesting is if one of the if one of the geese is injured or is sick and can't continue on the journey, two other geese will drop back and, and stay with that one goose until it's able to fly. And then the three will do a small V <laughs> and press on until they re can rejoin the flock. And they'll do the same thing. One will go forward, two will go back, honking, 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 and they'll just keep doing that. That's commitment, friends. That's what, what Moses is calling on the people of Israel to do with God. To choose life in him and be committed to him. Because he's seen how they have not been committed to God. For 40 years, he's seen how they have grumbled and complained and not been committed and believed that God is all-powerful, all-knowing, sovereign, able to lead them into the promised land, no matter what is on the other side of the fence. That he has planned this for his people and he will make them prosper and he will make them succeed and he has a plan a future and a hope for his people israel if they will only trust in him if they will only commit themselves to him and they have not done that and so moses in these last days of his life is encouraging the people choose life choose life in in god commit yourselves to god And if you do, he will bless you. If you do, if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, Abraham, Jake, Isaac, and Jacob. In other words, if you choose to follow the Lord, if you choose to commit yourself to the Lord, he will bless you. You will live long and prosper. Not in your own strength, but by the grace of God. But it takes, it requires a choice on our part to repent, to acknowledge our sin, to confess it before God, and to commit yourself to Him. And so, friends, I encourage you to spend time with the Lord in prayer. If there's something that you have been carrying, confess it to God. Leave it at the foot of the cross. Say, Lord, I've been carrying this around with me for years, and I am done with it. I'm giving it to you. I'm letting go of it. And I'm laying it at the foot of the cross that you would take it and you would deal with it. And turn and walk away. Don't look back. Don't say, I'm putting this at the foot of the cross, but I'm not letting go and taking it back. No, leave it there. Turn around and walk away. And leave it with God to deal with. And when you do, when you commit yourself to him, when you live according to his commands, his word, his love and grace will be poured out upon you. 
and you will live long and prosper in him. Because his desire is to provide abundantly for you according to your need. Not according to the riches of this world, not according to the, the ideas of this world, but according to your need in his will for you. Trust in him. Commit yourself to him. And know the peace which passes all understanding. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this day and for your word which encourages us, which convicts us, which helps us. Jesus, we thank you that you laid your life down on the cross for ours, paying our sin debt in full. That you provided us with a choice to choose life or choose death, to choose blessings or choose curses, to choose you or to choose the world. And I'm reminded of the words of Joshua, who took over for Moses when he died. And he gave a similar speech to the people that Moses has given to us here. And he says, as for me and my house, we will choose the Lord. We will choose to serve the Lord. Friends, I hope that this day you will choose the Lord and know the blessings, the love, the grace, the compassion, the forgiveness of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in your heart and in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope that it has been an encouragement to you. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we unpack another verse from God's Holy Scriptures on our journey through this season of Lent. So, friends, go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. See you tomorrow, friends.